And, um, you know, I don't know why we decided to go to Ikea. Come on, some of you guys know where I'm going with this. I'd never been to Ikea, but Ikea is a very nice store. I mean, they have designed the store f- for you to have like a flow. Like you just walk in and you just, you're just being carried along through the store, right? And one of the things about Ikea is that all the furniture is already assembled. Matter of fact, they put everything that goes along with that furniture, and they give you the illusion of what your house could look like. Come on, man. They're smart. I remember we're, we're walking through this flow, and we're seeing, like, different settings. I'm like, wow, this is a nice store right here. You know, this is, this is pretty cool. And, I, and we get to the place where we see the drawers that we want. And I'm like, where are they at? How, how can we get them? Oh, they say, oh you got to get this little paper. You got to write down the location, and then you got to follow this one line that's going to take you to the warehouse, and you got to find it and, and, and just put it on your car and take it home. So I remember we went into the warehouse, we're looking for what we needed, and finally we find it, and it's just a box with no picture on the outside. I'm like, where's the one that's assembled already? <laughs> now, I'd never been to Ikea before. I had never bought nothing from there, so I thought that the assembly would be easy. You know, I, I felt like I had experience, you know, I, I built cribs before, come on, I, you know, I built all kinds of little baby things, you know, and... And so I remember that I got home. It, it might have been about eight, eight, eight at night when we got home. And I thought to myself, I'll finish these two drawers in, in an hour, tops. <laughs> Get it done in an hour and just, you know, it won't take me that long, right? I remember I opened up the box. I went to look for the direction, and the directions was one page. <laughs> Front and back. With drawings that didn't make sense. In another language, too. I mean, they just want to just follow the pictures. I, I, I started working on it. Nine o'clock came. I hadn't even started. Ten o'clock came, and I didn't even have half of it done. Eleven o'clock came. I was frustrated. I was mad. Midnight came, and the thought of going to bed was already on my mind. But come on, I was prideful. I was like, no, 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 I'm going to put this thing together. At 1 o'clock in the morning, I said, I'm calling customer service. <laughs> this, these, these drawings don't make sense, man. Who made these drawings? And I remember around 1.30, 2 o'clock, I thought I got a breakthrough. Because I had everything assembled, and it was just time to put in the drawers. And when I was trying to put in the drawers, the drawers wouldn't go in. And I'm like, what's going on here? And I finally I figured it out. I had it backwards. <laughs> I had to take everything apart. I had to switch everything down. And, 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 you know, I was so mad. I was so frustrated at that time. I was like, what is going on here? And I was kind of like hitting that wall, that mental wall, where I was like, man, I'm going to go back to Ikea. I'm going to take this stuff back, man. I'm going to tell them that, you know, this stuff don't work, man. Why They tricked me into buying this. But I remember, man, you know, I'm the type of guy that, you know, I, 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 I want to build it now. I want to see it now. I don't want to wait till tomorrow. If I, if I was going to wait till the next day, I had to wait till I came home from work. I said, you know what, Let, let's just get this done right now. Worked on the first one, finished the first one. I said, all right, I already know how to do the first one. Now I got to go into the second one. And it was at that time where my attitude shifted. Where I said, if I'm going to get this thing done, I'm going to need to change my attitude. And there are some times where reason why we can't break through, reason why we're going through some things is because we need to just shift our attitude we need to change our mentality. We need to go from hitting that wall to saying, I can break through that wall. I can go to that next level. And we need to find our breakthrough. When we read the story of David, there is a few things that David does in order to acquire the breakthrough that I want to teach you here this morning. Are you guys ready for that? And so I want to just talk to you real quickly about four phases to a breakthrough. Four phases to a breakthrough. The first phase is the conflict phase. We can't get a breakthrough 
if there is no conflict. You got to be in a conflict. As a matter of fact, that is the very reason why we need a breakthrough. That is the very reason why this morning you've been praying, God, I need to overcome. God, I need to have the victory because there is some type of conflict in your life. And this morning there are some right now that you are, you have been in a conflict, you've been facing a conflict. But I want you to learn from David. The Bible says in 1 Chronicles chapter 14, verse 8, the Bible says that when the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over all Israel, all the Philistines went up to search for him. See, David finds himself in a conflict here. And really, he finds himself in a conflict because he had received a promotion. You ever been promoted at work? What happens the next day? Come on, the haters reveal themselves. Well, why did you get promoted? I've been here longer than you. I've been in this company already five years. You just got here. Why'd you get promoted? Have you ever been promoted at work? Right? Your haters reveal themselves. And sometimes when a promotion comes to your life from God, conflict will come as well. In this case, David's conflict was the Philistines who wanted nothing more but to see David defeated. And see, they, the Bible is clear and it says that they didn't just send some of the Philistines to look for him. The Bible says that they send all of the Philistines. Another translation says that they went up in full force. And if this army was the same size of the army when David fought Goliath, it would have looked like something like this. 3,000 chariots, 6,000 charioteers, as many warriors as the, as the grains of the sand of the seashores. And sometimes there are going to be conflicts in our life that arise in our life that will make you think that they are trying to take you out. I know right now you might be finding yourself in a conflict. You're saying, man, there's way too many of them against me. I can't do it. I can't face it. But look, the first step in a breakthrough is you got to go through some conflict. And sometimes I want you to understand that just because you're serving God don't mean you're not going to have conflict. And conflict comes in many shapes and sizes and forms, right? It comes in the form of relationships. It comes in the forms of trials and tribulation, right? Sometimes conflicts come in different sizes and different forms, but they're only there because I believe God wants to take you to a new level. We've often experienced this, right? You get promoted at work, conflict comes. Sometimes you go through a season of misunderstand. You get misunderstood. There's a conflict there. Sometimes you decide that you want to get involved more than you've been involved before, and conflict comes knocking at your door, right? But don't be surprised when conflict comes your way because sometimes when it, it takes co conflict to get you out of your comfort zone because you've been a little churchy lately. Come on, somebody, because you've just been about what you're going to wear to church instead of who you're going to minister to because you've just been about, come on, somebody, just trying to look good. We're from the, 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 the Eagles. We're from the Eagles, yet you ain't raised nothing. Come on, somebody. And sometimes it takes a little a bit of you getting shooken up a little bit to get you on your knees, amen, to get you to that next level. I mean, no conflict is good. Sometimes we have to hear that a whole army is looking for us. Come on. Sometimes we got to hear that, hey, the whole army is coming after you, man. You better get up. You better stop praying. You better start reading God's word. You better start getting involved. Because sometimes we get a little too comfortable. But I want you to know that when a conflict comes your way, when you find yourself in tough times, when you find yourself in a trial, I believe that we are not the type of people that are called to run or that are called to hide. But I believe we're the type of people that we need to step into the second phase, which is we must be willing to confront and the Bible says that when the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over all Israel, all the Philistines went to search for David. And look what David does. But David heard of it and went out against them. How many of you would have ran? See, I want you to know that we cannot solve what we are unwilling to confront. And sometimes we act like things are going to take care of themselves. 
we're in a conflict and we're trying to pretend like it's not there, like it never happened, like we never said that, like we never did that. And we say Christian jargon like, oh, well, I'm just praying about it. But you ain't praying about it. <laughs> Try to act like, oh, we're fasting about it, you know, and we're taking care of it. But listen, if you're not willing to confront that, it's not going to solve itself. We got to learn how to pray about it. And, and we got to learn how to not just sweep it under the rug. Because sometimes we say things that sound spiritual but have a whole different meaning. We'll say things like, oh, we're praying about it. But really all that means is uh, I'm trying just to sweep it under the rug. We say things like, oh, yes, I'm believing God. But you ain't really believing God because everything you're doing is contrary to what you just said. David knew a little bit about confrontation. He knew a little bit about how to confront. He knew a little bit about, you know, and let me just say that sometimes I believe as Christians, we, we, we get soft when it comes to confrontation. And one of the reasons is because we don't know how to confront without getting in a fight. <laughs> Let me just say it like this. We don't know how to confront without getting in the flesh. We don't know how to approach somebody to try to solve something without us ending up in the flesh. Right? And listen, I, I believe that as Christians, God has called us to... To, 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 to lead in this area, amen? And know that when we confront, we don't confront to her, amen? We just confront to Saul. David knew a little bit about, about confronting. The only reason he could confront this army, I believe, is because he had experience in confrontation. If you remember the time when he was talking to King Saul, you guys remember that? And, and, and Goliath was taunting the armies of the Lord. And David said to King Saul, he said, do not be dismayed. He says, I'll fight Goliath. And Saul looked at him and said, you can't fight Goliath. He's been a warrior from his youth, and you are just a youth. And David said, King, he's all, with all due respect, he's all, let me just let you know a little bit about something. He's like, I was a shepherd's boy, and I took, my, took care of my father's sheep. And when that lion came trying to find one of those sheep, and when that bear came and tried to take one of those sheep, and it took off, and it took it, and I, you know, I would run after the lion, I would run after the bear, and I would take the sheep away from his mouth. And if that lion or that bear turned against me, I, I love the message, by the way, it says, I will grab him by the throat. It says, I, will, I would wring his neck and kill it. And so just how I've defeated the lion and just how I defeated the bear, this uncircumcised Philistine does not stand a chance because he has defined the armies of the living God. I believe he was able to go, come against this army because he had already confronted the lion in his youth. He already had confronted the bear. He already had confronted Goliath. And so he knew if I am going to get a breakthrough, then I need to go up against them. And sometimes, man, we, we, we just sit there and wait and linger and let time go past. There's a conflict. There's a giant. There's a barrier. There's a wall standing right in front of you, calling you out, taunting you. And we don't come up against it. We, you know, we, we sometimes use religious jargon, man. Oh, I'm just trying to be humble. <laughs> Listen, if, if you're taking that route, I believe that's a, that, that, that to be a good route. But if you're going to be humble, it shouldn't be tearing you apart inside. Because you're saying you're being humble, but it's tearing you up inside. And inside, you already laid hands on them and not the spiritual hands. Come on, somebody. <laughs> inside, it is keeping you from assisting church. Inside, it is keeping you from going into other ministries. Inside, it is breaking that relationship you should have with them. Yet, you are walking around saying, oh, I'm taking the humble route. And meanwhile, while you wait and, and you're being confronted and the, the Goliath is standing right in front of you. You are deciding not to confront because you don't understand that your breakthrough is right behind that. That's why sometimes when you come to church, man, you feel a certain way. 
or, or, or maybe you're going to work and you feel a certain way. You're going to continue to feel like that until you say, God, uh, God, I, I need you in my life. I need to go to the next level. I know what's preventing me from breaking through. I know what is stopping me from, from, from accessing what you have for me in this next level. You need to be willing to confront. And the reason why you don't confront is not because you're not confronting your enemy. It's because you don't know how to confront yourself. You don't know how to look in the mirror and give yourself a good old-fashioned rebuke. I often say this. I often say humble pie tastes better when you serve it to yourself. <laughs> humble pie is not good, but it does sure taste a lot whole better when you serve it to yourself. When you walk to the kitchen, get a knife, cut yourself a little piece, put it on the plate, sit down and eat it yourself rather than someone else giving it to you. And we got to learn how to confront ourselves. See, David knew how to confront himself. And a lot of times he would write in the Psalms and he would say, why are you conflicted, O soul of mine? Why are you downcast? What is wrong with you? You need to pick yourself up. At, sometimes he would have to remind his soul about God's benefits. And he would say, God, you are great. God, you are awesome. God, you are everything. And sometimes we got to learn how to just breathe into ourselves and begin to speak to ourselves. And you're not crazy if you talk to yourself. Come on, just don't answer yourself. But ask yourself some questions and say, what is wrong with you? Why aren't you doing what you're supposed to be doing? Why aren't you living up to what God has created you to be? Sometimes conflict has a way of keeping us down. Conflict has a way... Uh, of not allowing us to break through into that next thing God has for our lives. I want you to know God has not called us to live like that. God has not called us to be walking in the church house oppressed and depressed. The Bible says that, yeah, we're, we're a little oppressed, but we're not crushed. The Bible does say that, yeah, we are going to be persecuted, but we're not abandoned. And so sometimes we got to just speak to ourselves and say, self Whatever you are going through right now, man, you need to shake it off. You need to get up, and you need to confront what is standing before you. Sometimes a good old-fashioned rebuke will work. And if you don't like the way you look, don't look at the mirror then. Just tell yourself, get up. We've got to learn how to confront ourselves, amen. We've got to learn how to come against whatever is trying to stop us. You know, so many times we ask the question, God, why? God, why is this happening in my life? When you already know the answer, you already know the answer. You already know what's going on. All you got to do now is move and proceed and step into what already God has already told you. We gotta be willing to confront ourselves. Because when we confront ourselves, we begin to conflict solve. Come on, somebody. We begin to solve. We begin to solve these problems. So many times. The only time we confront is we confront to front. What I mean about that is we confront to front is you try to confront spiritual problems like you used to in the world. And you just confront to front. Like you confront and you're being somebody that God has not called you to be. You're like, well, I'm going to go talk to them. Uh, if I was in the world, man, they would have did that. Come, you're not in the world no more. That's why you're still in that conflict. Because you're trying to be Triple G. Come on, somebody. You can't solve problems like that. So we find ourselves in a conflict. We must be willing to confront. David heard that the enemies were coming against him. He got up and he went after them. That's the third thing that we find is that when we find ourselves in a conflict, we got to confront, but also we must be willing to consult. And as basic and as elementary as this sounds, there are many that can't break through and won't break through because they consult everyone else except God about what they're going through. And it's funny that when someone's going through a conflict, they go consult people they would never consult when they'd be in the right mind. Come on. 
You know who you go conf- you go confront the cosigners. You're just trying to get a little backing. You're just trying to get a little, you know, a little push. Like, yeah, 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 you are right, right? The Bible says, now the Philistines had come and made a raid in the valley of Rephaim. And David inquired of God, shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you give them into my hand? And the Lord said to him, go up and I will give them into your hand. And see, we know that according to the Bible, David was known as a man after God's own heart. We see it. Clearly that in this story, because David consulted God about about going after the Philistines, God gave him victory. But I want you to make a note of something. That David went before God to consult God about something David was well versed in. See, David knew war. David understood military tactics. David was a warrior. This was not his first run-in up against an enemy. David understood it, and and, and David knew how to fight against the warrior. But David, although he knew, he still went and consulted God. See, and it's in in these times where we think we know that we tend to lean a little bit. See, David could have leaned on his his experience. He could have leaned on his own understanding for a little bit, right? He could have said, you know what, I have experience in this, but yet he goes to God. And sometimes, you know, I believe the reason why we can't break through is because we're in that mode where we're just leaning on our own understanding. Because when we don't consult God, we tend to lean. When we don't see God's face about a certain situation, we enter into the I know. How many have kids? How many know groaners? I know. I know. Anyone that tells me I know, I reply, no, you don't know, because if you knew, you would, you would do it. <laughs> and there are many walking around in some situation in their life where they can't break through with that. I know. You can't even let someone get a word in because you're like, I know. Or I was thinking about doing that. And sometimes we can't break through and we can't really get that breakthrough that we need because we don't know how to say, shall I go up? We don't know how to ask God, will you give them into my hands, man? And if some of you would just learn how to say, God, do you want me to go? And God, shall I go up, man? I believe God will give you so many breakthroughs. And it's it's fun because this is so elementary, it's so basic, yet there are so many people that don't go and consult God about what they're facing right now and are being led by their emotions. See, I want you to understand something that in a season, when you're facing a season like this, the only thing that will get you to that next level is divine approval. A fresh word from God. Why didn't David rely on past victories? Why didn't David say, God, you've done it before like this. God, you've, you, I've seen you do it like this before. Why did David go before God? Because he needed divine approval. He needed God to give him a fresh word and to say, yes, I want you to go. I will give them into your hand because he understood something that yesterday's victories were not good enough for today's wins. Yesterday's victories were not good enough for, see, some of you guys are like, well, last year I raised a lot of money. Well, last year I had the green shirt. Matter of fact, some of you guys are wearing the green shirt right now from last year. Come on, and you went into the closet, and you said, oh, it's Run for Hope shirt day today. I'm going to go ahead and lean into my past victory here a little bit and go ahead and give myself this little green shirt right here. It's not even green no more. Come on, somebody. It's like fade into lime green now. Relying on past victories. Relying on what the past has done for you. Relying on what... Has been going on, you know, there's a saying in the NFL, when a, when a, when a player wants to get a, a new contract, there's a saying that, what, what, what have you done for me lately? I know last year you did this. I know last year you rushed for 1,300 yards. I know last year you had 30 touchdowns. But what have you done today? What have you done today that's going to help you get into that next level? And sometimes we got to say, God, I know you've been faithful in the past. I've seen you do it before in the past. But, God, I need a fresh word today that's going to help me break through 
for tomorrow. Come on, give Jesus a big hand here this morning. Come on, last, last time I came, the, the hungry lions were starving, amen, and they still are, come on, somebody. Come on. Oh, they're top five. Last year, they were top five, amen, but... Hey, it's getting fierce, man. Competition, man. <laughs> David consulted God because he understood a very important principle that I want you to get a hold of this morning. I want you to get a hold of something here this morning. Something that was very key about David's life was that David understood how important it was that before he stepped into the fight, he would go before God. And he understood something. From a very young age, from the time when he fought Goliath, he understood this. He said this when he fought Goliath. He said, this day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spirit that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's. See, when we find ourselves in a conflict, we got to be willing to consult God because the battle belongs to God. And there are many here this morning that the reason you are losing is because you are fighting a battle you were never called to fight. You are trying to come up, up against the enemy who you were never called to fight. You were never, God never said, I will give them into your hands. God never said, I will give you the victory. God never said, pursue. And you are fighting a fight right now this morning that God has never intended for you to fight. David understood that the battle belonged to the Lord. The battle belongs to God. How many know what I'm talking about? Later on in that story, we read that the Philistines came again a second time. And again, we read it. The Bible says, and David again inquired of God. And this time God said to him, you shall not go up after them. He says, go around them and come against them opposite the balsam trees. And when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the balsam trees, then go out to battle. For God has gone before you to strike down the army of the Philistines. And the Bible says in verse 16, it says that David did as God commanded him. David did. As God commanded him. What is important to understand and to make note of here this morning is that David, who was a man who we were able to read from a very young man, a very young age to an aging king. What we find about David is that although things went against his life that could have caused him to go into a depression, could have caused him to give up and say, I don't want to be king. I don't want to do this. We find that David did what God always commanded. He does, he, see, because sometimes we go to God and we don't listen to what he says. We go to God and we say, God, I like her. And God's like, but she don't like you. And we say, we go up to God, God. Have you called me? Yes, I've called you. And God has already spoken you and given you the answer, yet you don't do what God has called you to do. And I want you to understand that if we're going to consult God, it goes hand in hand with being obedient to what he says. And sometimes when he says what you don't want to hear is when you don't do what he told you to do. And is when you just prolong that season of conflict in your life. We got to learn how to obey God. Amen. It's interesting to me that David, he inquired of God two times, and two times got a different response from God. One time God said, go, I have given them to, in, into your hands. The second time he says, don't go. Go around them the opposite way. And when you hear them come, then step out, for you know I've gone before you and given them into your hands. See, there, what, what that represents is sometimes we're going to have to do things as God speaks to us on our own, and then sometimes we're going to have to let him go before us. Sometimes he's going to tell us, go, because I've already told you to go. Sometimes he's going to say, wait, because I'm going to go before you. 
And that's why it's important because we can't expect him to answer us the same way when we've been praying about something different and try to do what he spoke to us last time. We've got to learn how to obey God. We've got to learn that if we're going to go to God, if we're going to consult God, then we've got to be willing to obey God. How many can say amen? I'm going to ask the worship team to come on up. We find David was in a conflict, but David confronts his enemies. And David consults God. But fourthly, David was committed to see that breakthrough come in his life. See, the Bible starts off by saying that when David, when the Philistines had heard that David had been anointed king, and this is not referencing to the first time he was anointed. This was referencing to his second time that he was anointed. And when he got anointed the second time, it was really the approval of the people. He was taking the kingdom. And he was going to reign because the Bible he got anointed king over all Israel. But something interesting that allowed David to get his breakthrough Something that I believe is key for us to do when we're looking for a breakthrough is that the Bible says in verse 11, it says, And when he went up to Baal Perizim, and David struck them down there, and David said, God has broken through my enemies by my hand like a bursting flood. When God told David, to go up. When David had asked God, God, will you give them into my hand? Shall I pursue? And God said, go. He says, go up. And David went to a place called Baal Perizim. In that word, Baal Perizim, it means the Lord of the breakthrough. When God spoke to David, he was really telling David, look, David, you're not going to get your breakthrough right there where you're at. You need to go up. So many times, man, we wait for breakthrough to come to us when we need to go to it. How do we go to it? We go to it by being faithful to our post. We go to it by being faithful to that chair where we always sit at. We go to it by saying, in spite of what I'm going through, I'm not going to leave my got to go because listen if you have ever been in need of a breakthrough there is nothing else that will make you feel the breakthrough more than going to where God's told you to go your job can't get you your breakthrough come on sometimes sometimes that happens man when we're not feeling the fulfillment of being used in the house of God we turn to our job as our right our job becomes our church come on somebody our boss becomes our pastor. Our check becomes our God. But we're not going to find the breakthrough in that. We're not going to find the breakthrough in other things. What we got to know is that if we find ourselves in need of a breakthrough here this morning, then we got to go to the Lord of the breakthrough. We got to commit ourselves. And how many know that's hard sometimes? How many know that sometimes sitting in your chair when you don't want to sit in your chair is hard? Lifting your hands when you don't want to lift your hands is hard. But we got to do it. We got to commit to it. David committed to going to fight the Philistines. And he says something key. He says... God has broken through my enemies by my hand like a bursting flood. You ever try to hold back water? You ever had like a pipe that broke or something? You were trying to be the plumber for all this? Sprinkler? Come on, you're trying to fix a sprinkler. It's very hard, man, because once water breaks forth, there is no stopping it. There is no stopping that water. 
believe that the water represents the Spirit of God breaking through your situation, breaking through that barrier, breaking through that wall. See, David, David, David was able to experience the breakthrough because he committed himself to it. He found himself in a conflict. He, cons he, he, he confronted it. He consulted God. But he committed himself to it. And this morning, man, if you're going through a conflict, if you're going through something tough right now, I want you to understand, man, that it's not the pity party you're inviting others to that's going to get you out of that breakthrough. Come on, because some, some, sometimes we pass off flyers to our pity party, right? We want people to come. Here's an invitation to my pity party. Can you please come, right? We're trying to get a breakthrough at the pity party. What was so key about David's breakthrough in this story is that if you keep reading it in the next chapter, him conquering the Philistines opened way for the Ark of the Covenant to come back to Jerusalem. And the Ark of the Covenant was representative of God's presence. And it, it, it represents that the moment we learn to confront our situation, the moment we consult God, the moment we commit ourselves, is the moment that we allow God's presence to come back into our life. Because at times, come on, when we're in a, in, in a conflict, we feel dry. We feel like, I don't know if I can make it. But church, we need to get to that place, man, where if you're experiencing right now a situation in your life where you need breakthrough, man, then we need to, we need to go to God. And we, don't, we, we need to go to God not with that same prayer that we pray all the time. But we need to be specific. And we need to say, God, you know how I feel right now. God, you know I don't feel good. God, you know that, come on, they talked about me. God, you know that, God. But, Lord, I'm still going to serve you. I'm still going to be committed to your ways, God. I'm still going to go and be faithful at my post, God. I'm still going to do what you've called me to do. This morning, I, I believe, if you find yourself in a conflict, I believe there's a next level waiting for you. I believe that there's a breakthrough waiting for you this morning. But you really need to take on that attitude. You really need to take on that attitude of, we're going to break through here this morning. I want you to stand with me here today. Come on, I want you to lift your hands right there. Come on, he's the Lord of the breakthrough here this morning. And if you've been facing some hard times, if you've been going through something tough here this morning, I want you to lift your hands right now.